Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockhoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. If you haven't had a chance yet, make sure to check out our website, gapology.org. It's the perfect way to learn about our organization and quickly access all of our products, services, and solutions. We have direct links to all episodes of Gapology Radio Podcast, our Gapology Ingle blog, our merch page that will connect you with our store, and much, much more. It also has convenient links to all of our social media sites and email if you'd like to connect with us and start a dialogue on all things leadership development. That's Gapology.org. Check it out today. And as for tonight, we're continuing our discussion on culture with creating a culture of winning. So let's go ahead and get things rolling with Martinez. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Good, Brian. How are you? I am good. I'm good. It's uh, been a wild week here in Kansas City. It was uh, boiling earlier this week and humid, and now it's like freezing. And I was wearing a sweater outside, and it's, it's been nuts here. In the 90s here in California, so... <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, I saw in the news, they were talking about the snow melt uh, in the mountains is going to be kind of a dangerous situation, possibly. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Pushing hopefully, the water downstream. Yeah. Hopefully it fills all the reservoirs or whatever you guys need out there. Yeah. The rafters and the swimmers in the river are at risk. Oh, wow. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have a good topic tonight. Um, I'm I'm interested to get your thoughts on this. You know, we've done thousands, <laughs> it feels like at least, of uh, these Gapology workshops over the years, and and thousands of people have attended. Well, for sure, for sure. Um, so, you know, one of the questions that keeps coming up uh, regarding culture, you know, we're we're in our culture series is how do you create a culture of winning? You know, we, we talk about Gapology is all about creating action, leading teams to win, creating winning leaders. And, and we use that term quite often, um, but we really haven't spelled out um, how you create a culture of winning. So I'd like to just kind of get your thoughts on, on what do you think, um, you know, what, what kind of advice have you given in the past? What kinds of things have you seen uh, with the teams that you've uh, presented? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so we have done Gapology workshops with teams that have a culture of winning, and we've enhanced that. And we've done Gapology workshops with teams that aren't winning and and help them win. So that's a good question, and I think we know the answers. So I would tell you the first uh, element that has to be in place would be clear expectations. And that comes from the leader. When there's clear expectations and they're narrow, it facilitates winning like nothing else. It's um, it's a big advantage. So whatever your KPIs are, uh, key performance indicators, whatever measures you have of performance, make sure they're narrow. There's only a few of them. Three to five is our is our rule. And we've seen that in the winning organizations. That changes everything. Three to five. And everyone knows them. And they know the behaviors that equal them. So that is part of the culture of winning. And when a leader ensures that that's in place, everything changes right there. Yeah, I think it is critical that... Well, first of all, defining that, right? So defining what winning looks like, defining what you're going after, understanding very clearly what those expectations will deliver as far as the, you know, how it, how it connects with your purpose, your mission, the, you know, some of those things that are culturally important to you. Um, I think that's important. And then making sure everyone knows them. <laughs> that's, you know, that's critical. Make sure it's, you know, it's, it's rolled into your training and it's, and it's something that you talk about frequently. So it's not forgotten. Um, I think those things are critical. Yeah. So then when you combine that with a leadership rhythm that reinforces that, 
that looks at those thing, those same KPIs and the behaviors each week, et cetera, publishes the results, et cetera, it changes everything. So it makes everything about the KPIs that equal what you're trying to go after and the behaviors that equal those KPIs. It, it all comes together. And, and when you combine that with celebration, so what you recognize equals that. We, we like the saying, we are what we celebrate. And we found that to be true. When we look at winning organizations, they celebrate the things that matter. They celebrate the things that culturally fit the KPIs and that that achieve winning. And it changes everything. Think about that. What if you celebrate things that don't matter? We've seen that. That doesn't help the team understand what matters. So when you have a rhythm around celebrating what matters, everything changes. Yeah. You, you know, the, uh, the leadership rhythm, that is such a great point. And we haven't spent a ton of time on that specifically on the podcast. I know we, we touched on it here and there. Um, but that is critical because your leadership rhythm, your cadence, things that you do, your team sees, they see it, they respond to it, they'll emulate it. Um, they understand that that's what you value. And if you're doing things that are contradictory to the things that you're saying are important, uh, that will break down the culture every day of the week. Yeah, well, well put. And when when the results are not what they should be, we have seen the winning cultures, the winning leaders look in the mirror, understand that likely they are the gap. They are the gap. The organizations that quickly say the team is the gap are missing it. The leader is generally the gap. And when you close the gap with the leader, if they become clear on expectations, as an example, because they weren't clear. They thought they were clear, but it, it wasn't clear. They sent the memo, but they didn't verify that everyone understood it. That, that's a game changer. We, the, the origins of Gapology came from an analysis of what we called A group and C group. A group was the top 10%, a real outlier group. The C group was the bottom 10%, a real outlier group. And we compared the difference between the two and what the leaders did differently. And it was shocking. It was shocking. The A group considered themselves teachers. Understand that the leaders thought they were teachers. And because of that, they were in the top 10% of results. The bottom group didn't think about it. The bottom 10% didn't think about it. And because of that, their team was not clear on the expectations. So everything changed. So looking in the mirror, understanding that you as a leader are the reason the results are what they are and owning that changes everything and it changes the culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, something occurred to me as you're saying that is, you, you know, when, when a leader is delivering a message, whether it's teaching, training, coaching, any of those things, and they think they're clear, that doesn't matter. What matters is, is their clarity in the mind of the team. So when you said that, that, that you need to verify what you're delivering, that is critical because it really doesn't matter what we think. It only matters if clarity is there in the mind of the team. Yeah, what we found, yeah, you're totally correct. What we found in the, the A group, again, the top 10% of performers, against a set of metrics, what we found was that the A group, if they were missing a metric, they looked in the mirror and understood that likely they were the issue. They pulled the team together and said, why are we struggling? They figured it out and quickly course corrected to get back on track. And they got back on track. So the result miss was for a very short duration. It didn't continue. That's a game changer. That is a culture of winning. You're not going to win every play and every game, but course correct, and you're going to win the majority, and it's a game changer. 
So again, the A group, the top performers, the leaders consider themselves to be teachers. And when something was wrong, they looked in the mirror. When, when the results were not there, they looked in the mirror. They didn't blame. My team just isn't performing. <laughs> they looked in the mirror and said, it's me. Yep. It's about me. If I change my behavior, they change their behavior. Everything changes. They understood that. There's a direct correlation. Think about that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that mirror is a very powerful thing. Um, and along with that, that whole course correcting, I think oftentimes leaders get a little bullheaded because, you know, they come up with ideas or strategies, plans and so forth. And when there's other people involved, especially, uh, things don't always go the way that you plan. You have to have contingency plans. You have to, you know, be flexible. I think flexibility is a key leadership trait to be able to, to look at a result, say, hey, we're not getting what, what we're going after. Um, we're not winning. And I think language does matter in a lot of ways. So winning versus losing, let's just define it as losing. So if we're not winning, we're losing, right? So let's define it as that and be okay with the fact that now we understand that we've lost. Let's look at the uh, behaviors that drove that loss. Um, what, uh, you know, what was missing, you know, do a whole gap analysis on it. And then having that ability to be flexible in your leadership and course correct and help the team, you know, head down a different path. Yeah. Well said the, the winning leaders understand that course correction is part of leadership and that it is going to happen frequently, frequently, right. and they're ready for it. And they understand it and 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 they do it. We are we are going to struggle here and there. And how you uh handle struggling, what you do about that when you're missing something, when you're missing a metric, is about the culture of winning. You course correct, you determine the behaviors that are needed, the course correction needed, you meet with the team, you ensure that everyone understands what is expected of them. And you go and everything changes mm -hmm. instead of instead of stepping back and blaming. We have not found, Brian and I have not found in the top performing winning cultures, a culture of blame. Yeah, that's for sure. It, it's not there. No. The culture of blame is in the groups that aren't that aren't winning. In the winning cultures, they do not blame. They look in the mirror, they course correct, they communicate with the team. Everything, everything suddenly comes together. So the basics of gapology insists that the leader look in the mirror and understand that likely, most likely, they are the gap. And therefore, everything changes when you have a leader that can look in the mirror and accept that they're the gap. And again, course correct immediately. It's very powerful. It changes everything because it doesn't require six months of analysis it's it's right there in the mirror yeah i am the gap yeah most likely i am the gap <laughs> and when i course correct everything changes yeah you know it, it's interesting if you think about so we were just watching a one of these fix it up shows you know where they tear apart an old house and they fix it and and, and all that kind of thing and in uh, at the beginning, when they were doing the demo, they were pulling out an old rug and they had like the two owners of the house and then the, the two like fix it people were there and they're all trying to roll this rug. And it was interesting there. Uh, the, the main person said, hey, we have to roll this all at the same time, all at the same speed. Otherwise, this will get all, you know, uh, cockeyed. Right. So. Of course, they don't roll it, you know, at the same speed, at the same pace. And what started out, you know, where it was just slightly off as they rolled that that carpet, as they rolled that rug, it got worse and worse and worse. And by the end, the carpet was nowhere near rolled straight. And I thought it was interesting as you were describing, you know, the course correction that as a leader, we have to identify when we are out of kilter, right? When we're not, you know, doing it at the same time or at the same pace. 
um, because we can prevent that long-term problem that can happen down the road. I love that. Uh, write this down. Maybe we do a t-shirt. <laughs> okay. Winning is a process. Yeah. It, it isn't a straight line that, that goes to the star in the sky. That isn't mm-hmm. how it works. It's uh, it's it's a consistent uh, reevaluation of where we're at, what needs to correct, um, and the again the leader is often the one that needs to correct, and everything changes, and uh, so they carry around this mirror. Mine's really heavy too, Brian. By the way, <laughs> got to work on that. I mean, it's really it's big and it's heavy. No, it's, it's tough, heavy. <laughs> but. I use it a lot, and every time I look in it, I find that, wow, there's the gap. And again, that's where the course correction begins. It's right there. One of our, we, we did this incredible gapology workshop in Denver, I think it was in October, and one of the key leaders jumped out of their chair and said, I'm the gap. I realized that I'm the gap. And that's the takeaway that's needed. When, when that happens, everything changes. The results can change right then. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That actually should be on a t-shirt. I'm the gap. Well, I'm the gap. Yes. I love it. That is going to be on a t-shirt. I guarantee that. How did you, how did you not think of that? I know. Well, it's because I'm the gap. <laughs> well, so on the front of it, it's I'm the gap. Mm-hmm. On the back, it's I'm the solution. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, that that's cool. I'll yeah. buy one of those. Okay. Good. Maybe we'll get a sale. So that's the culture of gapology. Yep. That's the gap. Yeah, absolutely. That's the culture of winning. Culture of winning created by the culture of gapology. Totally. Yeah. That's it right there. That's good. I'm the gap. Yep. Okay. Well, this is a good one, Mark. Thanks, Brian. All right. Thanks so much. I got to set this mirror down. It's really heavy. Yeah, don't hurt yourself. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, that'll do it from here. For more information on Gapology, Imbar, or Speed of Purpose, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.